Good evening. Uh, so my topic is MRI assessment of perineal fistula. Introduction, perineal fistula is an abnormal tract communicating an external cutaneous opening in the perianal region to an internal opening, most often in the anal canal. Perineal fistula is one of the most common and rectal disorders in surgical practice with high prevalence, which predominantly affects young adult males. Anal glands are situated in the intramuscular plane at the level of dentate line in anal canal. The burden of anorectal sepsis is high and persistent infection may spread in circumferential or in axial direction resulting in different types of fistulas within the first year of presentation with an abscess. Clinically, the Parkes classification and perianal disease activity index can be considered as the milestone for classifying patients with PAF and as the gold standard for evaluating its complexity and severity. Effective surgical treatment of PAF is mandatory to prevent its recurrence. However, the difficulty in recognizing the internal opening and the course of the fistula tract can make successful surgery sometimes challenging. Various radiological modalities were applied for evaluation of fistula patients. Conventional fistulography was used, but its diagnostic yield is limited, secondary to its difficulty to recognize the internal opening, especially if blocked by debris. Endosonography with color Doppler has greater diagnostic value than conventional grayscale endosonography for PEF evaluation. Three-dimensional ultrasonography improves PEF detection and characterization, so it plays a crucial role in optimal treatment planning, but proficiency is one of its limitations. Transperineal ultrasound is a very accurate diagnostic method, and for its simplicity and low cost, it is recommended to be the first diagnostic modality for anal fistula. MRI is the reference standard for assessment of perianal fistula, defining anatomy and guiding surgery. The aim of this study is to evaluate the role of MRI in pre-operative assessment of perianal fistulas, the methods. So this study was conducted in our department and we included 40 patients of clinically suspected PAF. Extracted data included patients age, gender, weight, height, calculated BMI and disease related data. Clinical data included pain, restriction of daily and or sexual activity, presence of inflamed skin and discharge of pus. And fistulas, they were classified according to their relationship to anal sphincters as intersphincteric fistula, intersphincteric fistula with abscess or secondary tract, transphincteric fistula, transphincteric fistula with abscess or secondary tract within the issue rectal fossa, supra-sphincter and trans-elevator extension, which correspond to St. James University Hospital grading 1 to 5 respectively. So this is an image which shows the various um, types of fistulas. So this is the Parkes classification. The type A is the intersphincteric fistula. The type B is a transphincteric fistula, which crosses both the internal and external sphincter, and then the supra-sphincteric fistula and the extra-sphincteric fistula. MRI protocol. MRI was performed using a 1.5 Tesla body MRI system and a pelvic faced array coil. MRI protocol consists of axial T1, axial T2, axial T2 fat set, axial, post contrast fat set, axial core, and SAT sequences. Inclusion criteria. All the patients with clinically suspected PEF and exclusion criteria included uncooperative patients. So this is the images. So this is the first image which shows a simple linear intersphincteric fistula. So we can see this is there is an axial T2 weighted image with fat suppression, which illustrates a simple intersphincteric fistula that traverses internal anal sphincter and then extends to skin without crossing the external anal sphincter or involving the issue rectal or issue anal space. Fistula tract shows high signal density on T2 weighted imaging consistent with active disease. This is a grade 2 fistula, and this is a core T1 weighted image post contrast, which shows a grade 2 intersphincteric fistula. Small abscess is also noted in the intersphincteric space. This is a grade 3 or a transphincteric fistula, where the fistula tract can be seen extending outside of the both internal and external sphincter. And this is the grade 4 transphincteric fistula with abscess formation in the right issue anal fossa. The results included that of the 40 patients in the study, 15 had a normal study with no evidence of fistula formation. Rest of 25 cases revealed perianal fistula, which were evaluated for the site of primary tract and its ramifications, the location of the internal opening. Out of the 25 cases, 10 were females and 15 were males. Youngest patient included in the study was 24 years of age and oldest was 68. So we evaluated the patient data and their complaints. And we found that the two cases, um, that 18 cases had presented with pain, two cases with pain, painless perianal swelling, five cases had history of discharge, two cases had a perianal fistula associated with Crohn's, and, now, uh, and um, one of them actually showed a horseshoe abscess formation. So in a study, uh, 25 cases, five had multiple perianal fistula and rest 20, patient, rest 20 patients had a single fistula. 12 cases were grade one, six were grade two, three were grade three, and three cases were grade four, and one case was grade five. So these are the various charts. 
showing. So the role of imaging is therefore to outline all the hidden tracks and define the relationship of the um, the track to the anal sphincter. So inadvertent damage to the anal sphincter can lead to anal, anal incontinence, hence the importance of knowledge of the relationship between the fistula track and the anal sphincter. There are, however, other indications of imaging in anal fistula. MRI performed adequately should be regarded as the gold standard for preoperative assessment, replacing surgical examination under anesthetic in this regard. And um, although there are some conflicting results, hydrogen peroxide enhanced endoanal ultrasonography may be comparable with MRI. MRI not only helps accurately demonstrate disease extension, but also predict prognosis, make therapy decisions and monitor therapy. So this is the use of the MRI. Thank you.